In this video, I will be explaining one of the most psychologically heavy backrooms levels that anyone has ever found. The level is negative 439, but it's also known by its other name, Schrodinger's Closet. This is a level that is very steeped in mystery and lore, and I've really never heard anybody else talk about it, so I figured I should be the first person. And since I love talking about obscure levels, and you all love obscure levels, this should be a banger video. Without any more blabbering on, uh, let's get into the video, shall we? Level negative 439 of the Backrooms, aka Schrodinger's Closet, has been given a classification of undetermined due to the many mysterious properties that surround it, as well as unknown information that has not been documented about entities that lurk inside this level. So obviously the level's name, Schrodinger's Closet, is a reference to the psychological scenario of Schrodinger's cat. Now, if you've never heard about that or anything, I'm gonna go ahead and summarize it right here really fast before I hop in the explanation of the level. In this psychological scenario, there is a box. And inside the box, you put a cat and a harmful poisonous substance. Then you close the box and you lock it and you seal it. At this point, the cat is then exposed to that substance, but you won't know if the cat is dead or alive until you open up the box and see. So until it's opened, the cat is simultaneously alive and not. And until it's removed from the box, it's in this state of limbo where it's alive but not. That's the entire thought experiment, the psychology behind it, and that is pretty much the same thing that this level follows. And this backrooms level directly references that concept, and to my knowledge, it's actually the only level to do so, which I think is pretty interesting. But with that intro out of the way, let me get into the level's details and explain all the lore that surrounds it. Level negative 439 begins in a small, dark, cramped room. Inside this room, there are no features of note that stick out. The only thing that you can see is a strange, intimidating door right in front of you. The door is illuminated by an unknown source of light coming from underneath it, but other than that door and the light shining through, the rest of the room that you're currently in is very, very dark. It's pitch black, and there is no distinct features or windows or layouts or anything else. It is a small, cramped room. The temperature in this room is ambient. It's not hot, it's not cold, but you feel very limbo. You feel very strange. There's no sounds to speak of, nothing coming from anywhere, and even the sounds you make fall completely silent. The only thing you'll be able to hear and feel is your own breath and your own heartbeat. Also, there's no lights inside this room, and no matter what light sources you bring, like it's a flashlight or a phone, that also won't work. Now, the darkness in this little tiny room has been described as abrasive and aggressive, and it feels like it's judging you staring at you, suffocating you. And even though there's actually no creature around you, the entire darkness embodies being alive. It feels like it's a thing that it's so dark and so oppressive. The darkness has no eyes, but it tends to see everything. Moving beyond this very dark, small room, there's literally nothing for you to explore or move to or get to except that closet door right in front of you. Now, the room you'll start in is like 10 feet by 10 feet. It's very, very small, and it's just tall enough to where you can stand up inside of it. So you're going to want to try to explore on, and this closet door be the only way out. It naturally leads you to explore what's behind the door. This closet, of course, is Schrodinger's closet. Now, it is not recommended that you venture deep into it, or into it at all for that matter, no matter how intriguing it seems, no matter how alluring it is, but you do have to open it up if you want to get out of the level, so just get that out of your mind. Don't be too scared to, but also don't go too deep in. If you do open the door, the following is what you will be greeted with. Swinging the creaking wooden door open, you'll hear the sound of a hollow and guttural deep rattle, a sort of rattle, if you will, and you'll feel this immediate gust of freezing cold air hit your face and skin. The rattling noise from deep within inside the closet will shake your bones and will frighten you. The cold air has also been described as death's kiss. There's an overwhelming and overbearing stench that also hits your nose when you open this closet, and it smells similar to mothballs and mold and iron. There's a dark and dank, pungent odor and feeling of decay and rot emanating from deeper within inside the closet, the source of which is unknown from where you're at. 
The cold air inside this closet makes that smell even worse. It makes it sharper, like a knife stabbing your nose over and over. Opening the door fully, the creaking will end, and you'll be greeted with a huge expanse of shelves and doors and cabinets that sprawl out in a skinny hallway for as far as the eye can see. This closet is much bigger than a regular closet, of course. Not wider, but longer. And on each side of the hallways, there could be shelving, there could be other doors that lead to small rooms, and things of that nature. This furniture, these shelves and everything, have nothing on top of them. They're all completely barren and completely empty. And the closet is very dark, just like the outside room, but it is very dimly lit in some of the places as well, from these very dingy lights. Darkness covers every single outreach of this closet, and that horrid, putrid smell of just rust clouds the air no matter where you go. The air feels like it's a weapon against you. You can kind of feel it in your eyes and in your nose and in your hands. The second you open the closet door and you walk inside fully, that door will then slam itself shut right behind you and lock you in this closet, essentially sealing your fate for now. You can't break down the door, you can't smash it, you can't tear off the handle. None of that seems to work. You are sealed inside of Schrodinger's closet. Once that door is shut, the level's gravity sort of creates this vacuum that pulls you deeper and deeper into the claustrophobic abyss of this closet. Some force, natural or unnatural, just begins to compel you to walk forward, and it pushes that smell of rot and maggots in your nose. It feels like you're underwater, that it's so hard and difficult to breathe through whatever this nasty smell is. And as long as you keep walking deeper and deeper into this closet, you are what the level wants. You're neither alive nor dead. Thus, making this level survival rate an exact 50-50, and also thus fulfilling the prophecy of its name, Schrodinger's Closet. You're not guaranteed to live, and you're not guaranteed to unalive. This closet will continue to generate as long as you walk forward, and eventually it'll get more and more claustrophobic, as if it wasn't skinny enough already, just a few feet wide, but it'll get shorter, and it'll get more tight, and the shelvings will become more tight as well. As I mentioned, the only other things inside this closet are the disgusting carpeted floors beneath you, random doors that can open up to small, cramped, weird rooms that definitely shouldn't be there, and shelves that are empty. It's thought that the shelves might symbolize the brain of somebody, and the emptiness of the shelves might symbolize the lack of thoughts and the lack of hope while inside this closet. After an unknown amount of time of walking down the very claustrophobic and very short and tight hallway, you'll begin to notice the corpses of other beings and things on the floor around you. Are they alive or are they not? You hear strange things emitting that rattle noise all over the floor and all over the walls, but it's too dark and you don't really care enough to find out what it is. Now don't be frightened though, because there is a way to exit this level, you just have to stay very aware. The only way to do so is to resist the urge to walk deeper into the closet and make sure you stay near the door. As I said, the door slams shut when you walk in, but after about five minutes of you being inside the closet, it cracks itself back open very slightly. Once this happens, you have a few seconds to run and burst out of the room, opening the door and getting back to that small black space area. And that is the only time and the only way that you can even escape Schrodinger's closet. It only opens once and it never opens again after those few seconds. If you miss it, you essentially seal your fate and you'll be a victim of the closet forever. If for some reason you want to enter this level, maybe to see what it's about, maybe to see if you can explore your own mind and psyche while exploring the closet or whatever, you can enter by getting lost in the darkness of level six, and you'll find yourself here in that small cramped room at the beginning. To exit, you gotta do what I just said, walk inside the closet. Once you get inside that dark cramped room again, you'll be sent back out to wherever you came from. Now that's all easier said than done, of course, because this closet has that ethereal draw to it. It has this ability to kind of lure people deeper and deeper, almost to where it's irresistible. But you can't give in to that and you cannot go deeper because like I said, you gotta get out using the door that opens for just a few seconds. Anyways, that's it for the video. Let me know if you enjoyed this level. I really did. I love psychological levels, and this one's kind of like a psychological test. I think it's very underrated. Go check out the page below in the description, and leave a like if you were entertained by it at all. I think it was very unique for videos that I do, but I hope you really enjoyed. 
check below for links to my other channel, like Spoogly and Toogly, and check out my podcast channel and all that, my Twitter, Instagram stuff. If you want more of me, those links are where you'll find it. Thank you for your amazing support over these years. And with all that said, I'll be back at you with another video in three days. Love you. Bye-bye.